Hello, and welcome to Esther's Gardening Adventures. I'm Esther, and guys, we are far enough into the spring season that I can do the first weekly garden tour. I'm so excited to show you where my garden is at. There's still some projects remaining, and of course I haven't planted up my summer vegetables yet, but the spring vegetables are well underway. Most of my winter sowing jugs have sprouted, and um, yeah, there's plenty to show you, including new stuff I've done since I showed my last video and um, I'm really excited because this also means that I you will have weekly content if not more than once a week content for me guaranteed through the rest of this spring and summer season with these garden tours um, and also I really hope that I can continue to show you the things I've learned the things I've done give you ideas and continue to have this great community of conversation we have um, around these videos so I look forward to hearing your thoughts on all of this. All right, let's go outside and see what's going on. There is one thing I wanted to add, which is you may see in this video me reference um, something called winter sewing or winter sewing jugs, and that is a process of um, growing my seedlings outdoors in things like milk jugs instead of indoors under grow lights for my spring and summer garden, my seedlings. So You'll hear a reference to that. The other thing I want to mention is in my last couple of videos where I showed um, putting up tool, a bridal tool um, over my um, kale plants. And you'll also see it's around my other brassicas in my front garden today. And some of you have asked questions about what that's for. And I don't think I've been super clear about it, which is embarrassing because I'm usually pretty good at explaining things. But clearly, sometimes I don't think to. So basically, you don't have to cover your plants to do this, but if you recall, one of my five major goals for my garden this year was natural pest control. And um, last year, my kale plants uh, and my cabbages suffered from the cabbage worm. Um, these worms will basically eat the leaves. They'll even bore into the cabbage potentially and um, just kind of break them down, destroy them, and make them not pretty too. And while you can pick the cabbage worms off, um, they can definitely overwhelm a plant and they are hard to see, especially when they're young. The way to, one way I've heard that's to prevent the cabbage worms from ending up on my kale, broccoli, things, uh, anything that's a brassica, Basically, the cabbage moths, the cabbage butterflies, these beautiful, actually quite pretty white butterflies. I think they have little dots on their, on their, um, their wings as well. But they're really pretty. And you'll see little white butterflies flitting around and they are harbingers of cabbage worms because they will lay their little eggs underneath the leaves and they're tiny, they're almost impossible to see. And then those eggs will hatch into cabbage worms. And so if you see a little butterfly, white butterfly in your yard, I mean, they're pretty and I appreciate that they're part of the ecosystem, but you don't want them on your kale. So that's why you cover them with tulle or some other kind of netting to keep them from laying the eggs on the plants. And um, as you'll see for one of the plants, I did not cover it in time and there's definitely a cabbage worm in there and I need to pull off the netting and figure out where it is. But I just wanted to explain that to you um, in case you weren't aware of it and, and I feel kind of bad for not having been totally clear about that um, because you know I'm only myself beginning to learn about these things. All right, now for real, let's go outside and see what's going on. All right, so we'll start with the front bed. And I'll just give you a general look real quick before I go into details. I still need to tie down the fence to the poles a little bit, but generally the fence is up. I <laughs> haven't made my gate yet, but crossing myself here, the um, lettuces and radishes um, have survived uh, without any rabbit damage. All right, bed number one. This is the um, this is the garlic. Look how good it's doing. Beautiful, beautiful. And you know when I put in the cover on this, I knew a worm had probably gotten in because I had seen 
a cabbage moth, a cabbage butterfly land on this plant. And sure enough, somebody's in here. I need to go in, find them, get rid of them. Just goes to show how sneaky those cabbage butterflies can be um, to get into your plants. Now I'm I'm hundred I'm ninety percent sure that that happened before I covered them because these these were overwintered. So um, I need to get in there. Second bed, and this is some new stuff here. Um, I went I you know I try to grow my own things as much as I can, but I'm such a sucker for flowers. And since I don't have any naturally flowering things yet, I bought some pansies uh, maybe two weeks ago and planted them just at the front of this bed. This used to be the holly bush here. Um, and they're doing really well. Um, the radishes I transplanted from winter sowing are doing great. You can see they're starting to thicken up here. So we could... These are French breakfast, which is the kind that has the red with the white tip. So we might be able to harvest some of these within a week or so. That's the wonderful thing about radishes, is how, uh, how quickly they do. Yeah. Next, we have our snack peas, our snack heroes. These are ones I got from the seed exchange. They look like they're doing great. And then I had a hunk of seedling thing where you just basically take the the chunk of of seedlings um, out of the the milk jugs and you just transplant them and you can see the red lettuce seems to be dominating um, having survived the transplant and <laughs> I think you may not have been aware I went from having one llama to having three llamas because I went to the dollar store and I just thought oh they're so cute together I just thought, oh, it'd be so nice to have the three in the bed. All right, guys, now let's check out the radishes that I direct sowed. They're doing really good. Overall, now these, I think these are the white icicle or, or they're the French breakfast. I can't remember, but I know these are white icicle. I know I saw one kind of emerging. Oh, yeah, there you go. Kind of see right there a little bit of white icicle thing happening and the french breakfast radishes over here starting to look pretty close to ready i'd say a week maybe two Ooh, that one's moving a little too much and i love i love 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 how they're kind of separating out from each other or facing away from each other a little bit <laughs> Um, I think it's just so cute. The beets that I planted directly as seed in this bed are doing really well. And over there, last weekend, I transplanted a jug of beets. And they look like they're honestly, both of them look like they're pretty close to the same stage of growth. So I'll probably have them all around the same time. And then... I haven't put the cover over it yet, but I today put in, in the stakes to create a bigger space for the Brussels sprout to grow. Because you can see this purple Brussels sprout is pushing at the netting for, it's getting big and beautiful and it needs more space. So I need to put a netting around this thing and, um, give it more room to grow. Um, so that's, I've put the bars in, but I still need to do the netting. Now well, the biggest change today, I weeded this bed. It was uh, three buckets or three huge mil uh, ice buckets of, uh, and when I say, these are the kinds of buckets you put like at a party, you put all the beers in with ice, like that big of a bucket. Um, tub there you go ice tub three of those worth to do this and this was this stuff I put on top is leaf compost that I got from the nursery this morning this was four cubic feet I put on top um, but it this is an in-ground bed so I'll I put the compost on top both as a mulch and also as a way to fertilize 
the bed, but this is where I'm gonna have tomatoes. And uh, one of the reasons I had to prep the bed is because I need to plant up my peppers very soon. On this end, I'm gonna do two or three, I'm sorry, not peppers, cabbage. I need to plant up my cabbage um, seedlings. You'll see them when I go back to the backyard. Um, and so I needed to have a place to put them. I grew them last year, I grew them in both a bucket and in the ground, and in the ground they just did so much better. So um, going, going for that, you can see there's still stuff in progress in this yard. I did patch up the cardboard spaces that the animal, the critter, had dug up so that at least it looks more presentable. If you saw the video where I talked about um, planting the sunflowers, there's all these gaps. So hopefully in a couple of weeks I will be able to transplant out the flowers that will go into this bed. And look, the sunflowers, these are the Autumn Beauty sunflowers that I planted midweek this last week, so maybe three or four days ago. Um, they're doing great. They look like they've, they look like they've adjusted really well to their, um, transplant. So that's, that makes me really excited. And you can see they get plenty of sun. And this needs a lot of work back here. This is an area that I need a lot of work in, but I gotta tell you, I get a lot of pleasure looking back here. And I'm just gonna come right here and show you. I just love looking back here and seeing the wild strawberries, which don't really produce anything you can eat, mixed with the violets, and the little wild strawberry, the, the yellow flowers. I just think they look so pretty together. And the violets are native to this area. And yeah, I don't know. I kind of think like things looking wild. I'm kind of strange that way, I guess. So here's a backside view of everything. I don't have my cushions out on the chair because it's going to rain and I don't want them to get rained on, but normally I have um, some white cushions on that chair. But it's finally starting to shape up to look like a garden. The big remaining thing other than planting for the front yard, the summer vegetables that is, is I need to clean up the compost. I'm going to use the compost I did last year in these buckets, but I need to take the weeds out of them. I need to get some of the chunks of roots and other things out of them and add some more fertilizer to them because, you know, it'll have been used up by plants. Um, so that's one of the big tasks I have to do before I transplant out my summer vegetables. But I looked it up today and for the location I'm in, my average last frost date is May 1 through 10. But I mean, guys, look how good this bed looks. You don't know, of course, if you're a gardener, you do know how much freaking work went into this. I got up at 7.30 this morning. I was out here at 8. I worked until 9.30. I went to the uh, nursery, bought the compost, came back, put it on. So I put probably three hours into this bed. Pretty proud of it. Pretty happy to have that done. This thing had so many weeds. I will show you when we look in the compost bin. You'll see how full that bin looks at the moment. Now I know things compress down, but yeah. Before I go to the backyard, I have decided to leave the back blackberry plants that I have potted up here for this year. They seem to be getting enough sun to be getting foliage and looking relatively healthy. And I see some of them are starting to climb up the porch as well. So we'll see how they do. Oh, I see a weed I need to pull. All right, let's head to the backyard. So as you can see, still plenty of jugs out and about. I opened up my, this, uh, this plant that got frost burn. And look guys, this is uh, my Christmas lima bean. And it looks like two of the plants, maybe even this one, but two of the lima beans survived. So I'm not planting anymore. I will directly sow some, but looks like I'll still have two lima beans from winter sowing after all. This is dill mammoth and cilantro that I'm going to have to transplant soon because they're a cool weather veggie. Some alyssum that I'm also going to need to transplant soon. And I will be doing a video 
um, as soon as I do this to show how I transplant when I've over sewn a jug, <laughs> as in this circumstance. Here's the cabbage that I need to transplant to the front bed that I just fixed, amended. But as you can see, I only need like three of them and there's way more than three in here. So I'm gonna be giving some of those away, but every year I give some away. Here's some chocolate mint I got from a local farmer. Um, and yeah, I'm not gonna dive into every jug now because I feel like we have a good idea. Just about everything has sprouted. The 16 year old tomato seeds have not sprouted yet. Neither have my fish peppers, nor a couple other things that I've been waiting on, but the vast majority have sprouted. Um, and honestly, guys, if your peppers haven't sprouted, it's okay, because they're usually, those on eggplants are usually the last to sprout because they like the warm weather. My perennial herbs of oregano, I think marjoram and thyme in this container are coming back. The lemon balm from last year is doing real well, as are the chamomile that I split up into three plants. Over there in the distance, you can see the mint is making a resurgence. And my rosemary is flowering, so pretty, so pretty. Hey guys, I have a question for you actually. Should I split up the rosemary plant and the sage to give them both more space? I think I probably should. I think the rosemary plant could use a bigger container as could the sage. So yeah, tell me what you think. How big of a container do you think each could use? And then my parsley from last year self-seeded and is coming back. And it looks like it's mostly parsley in here, although this, I'm not sure what this is. So I'll probably plant some of the cilantro here, but that mammoth dill I'm definitely gonna plant in a bed so it can take off. Lastly, I have to fix my little gnome habitat, but look guys, these are, let's see if I can get it on camera here. These are freckled, this one's kind of fading now, but freckled violas, they're tiny. And they're so cute. I planted them last year. Didn't get many flowers from them. And okay, Mr. Skeleton, time for you to face up. <laughs> My meditating skeleton. Um, and also the lily of the valley that came with the house. Looks like it's coming back. And it's such a beautiful thing in the spring to see. Here's some more. Now these aren't special kind. These are the native to the area. Some more violets. Oh, I just think they're such pretty flowers with such pretty leaves, really. Honesty time, guys. I know one of the things you love about me is kind of my straightforwardness. And I'll be honest with you, the backyard needs its weed whacking. We don't own a lawnmower, and that's semi on purpose, semi save money for other things. Um, and it only takes maybe 15 minutes to weed whack the backyard. Um, but yeah, so this week I'm going to have to weed whack the backyard. That's all about being honest, guys. That said, it makes for a nice carpet over here when it's been trampled down. And look, guys, the kale that I transplanted in that last video, which was probably, let's see, I did it last weekend. I know I posted the video only a couple days ago, but I transplanted them almost a week ago. And it looks like they're growing and they're doing well. As are the hunks of lettuce I transplanted probably two weeks ago. I had planted this one as a test. I had planted two individually. And it looks like they're doing great on their own. Versus as a hunk of seedling. Kind of my own little mini experiment. The Paris Island lettuce are looking really nice. The daffodils are pretty much at the end of their cycle, but that is fine. And the raspberry bushes are doing really well. So confession time number two. I did not get to the blueberry plants before they started. I wanted to transplant them into big containers and I did not get to them in time before they started um, 
waking up. So that means I'm going to let the blueberries stay here for one more year. But the good news is they look like there's one, there's another one, and it looks like it's getting flowers. So I think the blueberry plant survived last year and might be okay for now. This raspberry plant is doing great. And then I want to show you guys. Look at this, guys. Look at that beautiful cluster right there. That beautiful cluster of flowers that will eventually be raspberries. This, tr this bush is full of them. Full of them. Which makes me very happy. And I think I see my first strawberry flower, guys. <laughs> We're going to have strawberries soon. We're going to have strawberries soon. Yes. All right, let's turn to my second shade bed. The peas are doing really good. These are sugar snap peas, sugar and sugar snap peas. A few of them have started attaching. Oh, there's one. See the tendrils? Right there, I've started attaching to the fence or to the trellis, which is great. I have fully thinned them now, so they're just one each. The mustards, doing pretty good. And this one looks like it's getting its first true leaf, so that's exciting. Grow, little mustard, grow! Over here is Simpson lettuce. And I think we have three. I don't know if that one's one or not. Yeah, three sprouting. And then, guys, look at the spinach. I only have done two squares. And I told myself I wouldn't plant up the second set of spinach until they got their second set of true leaves. The first ones did. So probably next week, it looks like, by the looks of that. Look, there's first set of true leaves. The smaller leaves are true leaves. Look more like spinach, don't they? So that means probably in a week... I'll be planting up some more, but there's one thing I do want to show you. If you recall last week when we had, or two weeks ago when we had that frost, when we had that frost, the frost almost killed off, damaged pretty badly my nasturtiums. But look guys, I have volunteer nasturtiums in my garden bed. One, two, three. And you can see another one over there. Uh, on this side of the line from the peas. So I'm going to transplant them. This one's in the perfect spot. It's kind of almost in the middle of the square. So I'm going to leave that. And then I'm probably going to transplant these to another bed. Maybe one of the lettuce beds as well as one of the front beds. I love nasturtium leaves and I love how pretty the flowers are. So I'm super excited to see that they self seeded. Self, yes, seeded. This is the first year for me where last, I mean, I did have, okay. So last year I had one plant volunteer and it was the one plant that I had grown the year prior and that was my Mexican sunflower. But this year, this season is the first season where I have the opportunity to see how the vegetables I grew last year, whether they self seed and come back. And so I'm really excited to have seen the nasturtiums growing and having come back um, because it's just a fun part of the experience to see what will keep coming on its own. And so in addition, now I'm realizing to the wonderful thing about saving seeds is that sometimes you don't have to save them at all. Sometimes the plants will do it for you, which, wow, could it get any easier? <laughs> wow, all right. Last thing we're gonna see is I just wanna show you the compost bin because I want you to see all the work I put in today on weeding that freaking front bed. That's luck. And here it is. Now some of this is cardboard, but you can see there's a lot of weeds down in here. I'd say you can see kind of from where the cardboard is, it's probably close to half full. Now granted those, those plants have not been pushed down. So if you actually put, put something heavy on them, it'd probably be only be a quarter full, but I'm glad to be putting stuff in the compost bin. And I'll tell you what, having it closer to the front door has made it so much easier to keep up with it. I'm really glad I moved it and I'll provide a link 
here to the video I did about rearranging my composting plan. My forsythia bush is starting to bloom. Yay! Yay for flower blooms. They're so pretty when they do. This bush is going to have a lot of blooms this year. Last year this side did not bloom and I don't know why, but it looks like the whole thing's going to do it this time. The sunflowers I planted a few days ago, uh, four days ago or so, I think. They're doing really well. That one, that one's still pretty small over there, but they're doing pretty well, I think. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button. And if you aren't already a subscriber, please consider doing so and make sure you have that bell set so you get alerted whenever I post new content. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.